Hello, everyone. My name is Owen Godimer. I'm the community manager at TechWell. I'm joined today by Alan Crouch, the director of application security at Coveros. Hey, Alan, how's it going? Doing well. How are you doing? I'm all right. Thanks. Alan and I were going to chat today about uh, security acronyms in software. So we hear a lot about these security acronyms, RASP, IAS, DAST, SAST. So I wanted to kind of break them down and talk about what they are, how they can help, and how we can get started using them. All right, Alan, so do you want to give a basic explanation into what SAST is? Yeah, SAST stands for Static Application Security Testing. And what it's going to do is it's going to take advantage of having access to code, and it's going to look through application source code for security defects, um, different issues um, written into the source code, how the application is actually programmed to identify vulnerabilities that then have the potential of being exploited. Yeah, it's looking directly into that source code, which is different than DAST, which is looking at the uh, application itself. It's important, and we've talked about this in our DAST, uh, our little DAST chat, we talked about how it's important that we have coverage across all of the application, the source code, all of the pieces of it. Um, so the SAST, obviously, a huge component of that. How does SAST differ from DAST? Uh, I mean, we just talked, obviously, it's the application versus the source code. Are there any other major differences between the two? Um, it, a big is uh, the amount of time it takes. Um, SAS typically takes, um, you know, less time than running DAST. Um, it is um, a little, uh, I think, more reliable in the results you're going to identify. Um, you know, uh, as far as, you know, when you find a SQL injection written, identified in a, in a SAS scan, um, it's pretty, you know, common that that's a fairly reliable finding. Sometimes in DAST, you find things that are, um, you know, potential vulnerabilities, and you have to uh, perform further testing to really validate that that is an exploitable vulnerability, or if it's just something that, you know, not great, but not anything that's going to be exploited uh, or potentially exploited. So um, the findings of what they each of them identify can be slightly different as well. Um, so, you know, it's a little bit of the speed and where you can run it. Um, SAST, you can also run far earlier in the pipeline than DAST. So because DAST requires a running system, um, you have to build the application, you have to deploy the application, have an environment running, and then you can run DAST. For SAST, you could run every commit. So um, in the spectrum of shifting security left, SAST is a really good tool to do that because you can run it whenever you need to, um, even before the application is built and deployed. So some people now have an understanding of what SAST is, what DAST is. What's the next step? How can they get started with uh, SAST in their application security? Yeah, uh, so there's a couple of tools that, that can help you. Um, you know, there, there are a lot of commercial tools out there uh, like HP Fortify, um, or sorry, Microfocus Fortify now. Um, there's uh, Hailstorm, uh, lots of different SAS vendors out there um, that provide, you know, good SAS tools. Uh, all of these, these tools can be integrated into um, your build pipeline. And that, that's the ideal place to put them. So after each commit, when you do a build, it triggers a scan. And so you get upfront quick results of, you know, where's my security posture? I know what I changed and it created this vulnerability. It eventually helps developers create better, more secure source code. How important is it you know, it, it runs the scan. How important is it that once you run the scan that you actually do something with the scan results? It, it's critical, right? I mean, otherwise you're just wasting everyone's time and your time. Um, I mean, it's, you know, it's like anything else. Um, you know, it's great that I, my oil light comes on that says I need an oil change, but if I don't actually change the oil, it doesn't do my car any good. So it's the same thing with security. If you run scans and all you get is results and you don't do anything about it, you haven't moved the ball anything, any, any, far, any further forward. So um, it's really important that um, you find those findings and you address them early 
they're typically easier to, to fix and you have context because you know what you just, what you just changed um, that ended up becoming a vulnerability where letting it go and build up and vul a vulner vulnerability backlog to increase over time just becomes that more monumental a challenge to try to address down the road. Um, you're just kicking the bucket and you're making it much, much harder. <laughs>